If I take a gas that's 40 milliliters and a certain pressure and I compress it to 20 milliliters, the pressure of that gas inside of that syringe is now twice as high. So if it was one atmosphere to start, it's now two atmospheres. Back in the 1600s, Robert Boyle did experimentations to show that there was a relationship of an inverse proportionality between the volume and pressure of a gas. Now, Robert Boyle didn't have plastic at that time. He didn't have a number of other things, but he managed to find this relationship, and there were two competing explanations for it. The first was from Isaac Newton. So in the late 1600s, he just kind of come around with the inverse square law, and his theory was that gas particles are stationary and exert a repulsive force between them and that the further apart they are, the weaker that force is, but that as you bring them closer together, they repel more and more. And so for the observation of me pushing those gas particles closer together, according to Isaac Newton's idea here, his model of how this works, would be that the, the gas particles now exert a greater and greater force, and therefore if I release this, this is going to move back uh, to help alleviate some of that force that's not being balanced by the surroundings as much. Robert Boyle said, that could be true, I don't know, we can't see them. Also, another idea, which we would now call kinetic molecular theory, is that these gas particles are moving and then they bump into things. So, according to this theory, when I take the syringe and I compress these gas particles that are moving and bouncing in and colliding into things in here, that as I bring them closer together, just by the nature of being closer together, they're going to collide more frequently, and those larger collisions, are, or not larger collisions, but more frequent collisions, are going to lead to a higher pressure. So he was kind of the neutral in this, and it's interesting to note that Robert Boyle was, of course, friends with Robert Hooke, who was very animist towards Newton, uh, and they had a very uh, disgruntled relationship with each other. Uh, so these were the two theories, and it wasn't until the mid-1800s that we really start to kind of shift towards kinetic molecular theory away from this definitively. So let's look at what, what evidence would take you to show that this is a superior model to this, uh, once we move away from this particular example. So one of the big developments later in the 1800s was Thomas Graham came up with this idea of diffusion and effusion having differing rates based on gases. So in this container here, I have some concentrated ammonia. In this container here, I have some concentrated hydrochloric acid. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put a set of Q-tips into each. carefully here to put these into here. Up. And then we're going to go ahead and do the same over on this side. What we should find is that the ammonia travels faster through the tube diffusing. And it should meet the hydrochloric acid and form a white solid, an ammonium chloride solid, somewhere over here. Uh, so let's go ahead and zoom in. Hopefully we'll see that happen. start to form. I don't know how well that's going to come through on camera. Now this can be explained using the kinetic molecular theory, the idea that the gas particles here are moving. This cannot be explained using the Newton theory of the inverse square law where you have static gas particles, because otherwise how would these gas particles have moved from here to here in order to meet and form this smoke? You can also see this when we just 
hold the two containers near each other, but clearly the smoke is forming more by the hydrochloric acid than it is by the ammonia. That solid ammonium chloride. See that swirling smoke forming there.